All right, so in this exercise, we're going to be building this extruder mount frame. This is actually used in our 3D printer to hold a NEMA 17 motor and some sort of extruder that ultimately feeds the hot end for our printer here. So let's hop into it and get designing. Just like always, we're going to start here by turning on the origin. I'm going to click on that top surface like I always like to use and go into sketch mode here. And again, like normal, I'm going to use the rectangle tool starting from the origin, but this time going up and to the right. These dimensions are going to be 35 millimeters by seven. I'm gonna press the E key to go straight into the extrude tool and bring that up by 50 millimeters right there. All right, so now I want to click on this right face here and we're going to go into the sketch mode. Make sure it's in view. I'm now going to press the L key for line. We're going to start down here at the bottom left and just kind of place this up here along the top edge. I'll then connect that dot over here to the right just a little bit. Don't worry about the dimensions at this point. And then click from that point back down here. Now you'll notice if you, when you drag along this that you'll see a couple of very faint lines show up. Those are actually a parallel constraint. And if we click down here while you see those, will automatically add those, that parallel constraint to those lines. I wanna finish this up by connecting the two dots down here at the bottom. Hit the escape key to get out of that line command. And as we move this point back and forth, you can see that those lines are indeed moving together. And that's because of those parallel constraints right there. Pressing the D key to get into the dimension tool, I'm going to go off this front left edge here the very first line and we're going to make that 15 degrees. Press enter. I'm now going to dimension from this line to the one over here on the right and then click right over here. That is going to be two millimeters. Hit escape, finish sketch, or just simply jump into E because our next move here is going to be to extrude that profile out. And we want to bring this out 65 millimeters and then press enter. So that's the shape that we've created now. Now, since we already have this profile here, we can go ahead and click on this surface, go to extrude, just pan around here and click on the back surface. And rather than just having a, a dimension here, I'm going to say two object, and I'm going to go up to this face so that even if we have to change the depth of this, uh, we don't have to redo this cut. So there we go, click okay. And now we have this shape. All right, so now I want to add a little extrude that's going to run right up here down along this face. This is going to be this little bar right here. And what that does is it allows us to kind of lock into a groove on a, an extruded profile like this. So to do that, I'm going to go to the top of this part right here and start up a sketch command. And I'm going to create a little bit of a rectangle. So the rectangle I'm going to start with it's going to be the center rectangle. We're gonna click off the part and then come back on over here to the actual part and click on the edge. So now we know that we're on that edge. You can see the black line right there. And we also have a center point that's ready to go. Hit the escape key to get out of that. Hit the D key to get into dimension. And we're going to click from the center point there to that back edge. And I want this to be 12.5 millimeters. I want the depth of this extrude to be one millimeter and I want the width to be six millimeters. And this is going to be a standard that we are going to use throughout the project. Every time we want to kind of create that same setup that's actually going to lock into that extrude for this profile. Now let's hit finish sketch here or we can just hit the uh, extrude key by E and then we're going to click on this. And I'm just gonna move the camera down here to the bottom. I really like to use up to object so that's what I'm going to do and we're going to go up to the bottom of our part right there. Or we're going to go down to the bottom of our part. <laughs> yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, and then click OK. All right, so now I want to add a couple of holes that we're going to work with here. So I'm going to click on this face. We're going to go back into the sketch command. And this time we're going to use the line tool. This line tool is actually going to start right here from the middle. So right when you see that little triangle, we're going to take that. We're going to bring it straight down. Click anywhere. It doesn't really matter as long as it's uh, vertical and then bring it down a little bit more, click again, and then go all the way down here to the bottom of the part until you see that triangle again. So we've what we've done, hit escape key, we, we, what we've done 
is made three different lines. So if you click on the center line here and you just hit X, you can kind of see what we've done here. We got two points and we can move this around and we got another one that we can move right down here at the bottom. So what I want to do here is I always want this offset from the top of the part and the bottom of the part to be the exact same. So I'm going to use the equal constraint, click on that top line and the bottom line. That way our offset is always going to be the exact same number. And I only need to use one dimension to drive both of them. So going into the dimension tool here, I'm going to click on that line right there and make that 10 millimeters and then click enter. So that does it for that sketch right there. Now I'm going to jump into the whole tool and I'm going to click on that point that we created right there at the end of that line and also that point right there. Pretty cool. So now we're going to go into the clearance hole. We're going to be make sure that we're looking at the five millimeter one and the distance is up to an object and I click the back face right here. We could do through all um, but I like to use up to that object Maybe it's an old habit just dying hard, but uh, I guess we could just do all as well. So go ahead and do that and click OK. And now we've created two little holes right there that are going to allow us to bolt into the profile with our five millimeter bolts. Now, one thing that I don't like about this design is the fact that there is a very, very thin amount of material right here next to the hole. And that's going to be kind of hard to 3D print. So what I like to do here is add a little bit of clearance around this. So let's go ahead and create another sketch on this same surface right here. And then I'm going to go into the rectangle tool, center rectangle again. And if I mouse over the center of this circle, you'll see it kind of turns into a little circle right around my mouse. That is going to place at the center point right there. So I can lock into that position wherever that hole is. And then I can drag this out to the right and then click down. So we can do that in both locations right here. And then we're going to go into the equal constraint and we're going to make the left side and the top side equal. We're going to do that for both. So that right there fully constrains this by the width of how much that extrude was that we did earlier right there. So we didn't actually make any dimensions here. We're actually just using all the pre-existing dimensions in order to locate and to size what is eventually going to become this extrude right here. So let's jump into the extrude tool. We can click on this profile and this profile, and we're going to go up to the object, which is this surface right here, and then click OK. So that cuts out a little bit of a clearance right there. The last thing I'm going to do here is go under Modify and pick Chamfer. I'm going to click on this top edge and the edge that is right there, and this one, and this one, and we're going to make all of that one millimeter. So now when we're printing this part out from the bottom to the top, we don't have any overhangs or anything like that. We don't need to create any support geometry and it should actually print out nice and clean. And not only that, all of the things that we did here with the sketch, if we come back and we edit this part later and say, okay, maybe we don't want 10 millimeters here. Maybe we only want it seven. We press enter and that adjusts both the top and bottom and everything involved there, meaning that it's nice and flexible. We're actually going to keep that 10 by the way, so don't make that change. Let's go back to our home view right there. And we're going to now sketch the profile that's going to hold the motor and the extruder in place. All right, so we're going to create the sketch on this face right here. And we're going to do two different sketching commands. We're going to start with a circle. We can just place this down. That is going to be 24 millimeters in diameter. So we'll hit 24 just like so. And then we're going to go down to the rectangle tool, find that center rectangle, click at the center point of our circle that we just created. And this is going to be 31 millimeters. Go ahead and hit enter. And then jump over to the equal constraint, go with the dimension side, with the top side, and now we have a 31 millimeter square surrounding a circle. Let's go ahead and click on this square outline here, hold control, select all of them, and press the X key to make that a construction line just for good, you know, good quality control, I guess. The last thing we're going to add to this sketch is going to be four points. So going under the create tool, we're going to go to point. We're going to click in the top left corner here and the top right corner there and the bottom right and the bottom left and then hit escape. We're now going to dimension this hole into its final position. So go into your dimension tool 
from the bottom, we're going to be 25 millimeters up, and we're going to be 23 millimeters from the right. Now before we hit finish sketch, you may have noticed that we used a lot of different commands and we use them frequently. So rather than jumping up to this toolbar all the time, I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick here. If you press the S key on your keyboard, you can now search for anything that you want here. So if we were to go and make a center rectangle, we would start off with center. And now you see center diameter circle, center point arc. Well, we use center rectangle a lot. So if we actually mouse down here and you hit this little like add to shortcuts, that'll add it right up here to this shortcut. So we can actually skip that little drop down and finding it right there if we use the S key to kind of search for the next command. We also do a lot with points. So I think that's a good one to add to our shortcut right there. So this will save you a few clicks and something that you can customize as we move through a lot of different commands here frequently. Let's hit the escape key and hit finish sketch. We're now going to click on this area that we just created right here and extrude. And that is going to extrude normal to the face. So as you can imagine, we're going to go up to an object and click on this back surface right there. And we're just gonna cut through that every single time. Click okay. All right, so now something has happened that makes things a little bit hard to click on because we want to add four holes to this. So what has happened here is that after a sketch is used, it's automatically hidden. So we want to go over here to the browser, click the little arrow that is next to sketches, and find the last one that we just created, which is sketch eight. So if you click the little eyeball there, that's actually going to make it show up again. So in case you're wondering, yes, you can use a sketch for more than one feature, which is exactly what we're going to do now. So pressing the H key, I'm going to go into the hole command here, and I'm going to make sure that I'm selected on multiple holes, and we're going to click on those four points that we just created right here. And what I want this to be is a clearance hole for M3 bolts. So over here on the right, I'm going to make sure I'm selected on simple clearance, and then I'm going to make sure I go down here to M3, and the distance can just be through all because I just always want to go through everything right there. The fit is going to be from normal. That's it. Let's go ahead and, and click OK. So at this point, the sketch is still revealed. We can go ahead and go back over here and click the little eyeball to hide it so that we keep everything nice and clean. The next step I want to do here is go up to the fillet command. And I'm going to put a couple of fillets right here. That's going to be a radius of two. So I'll click two, just like that. And one final step here is I'm going to add a chamfer to these last couple of edges right there, there, and then on the bottom side as well. So that is one millimeter. All right, so after a bit of design review, I've determined that this is going to be the best surface to be placed down on the base of our printer. So if we're printing up layers and we start to move from the right to left here, we kind of run into a problem. There might be a slight overhang right here. So what I want to do is go back in history where we have that chamfer that we just created right here, and I want to edit that. I'm going to right click on that feature, go into edit, holding the control button, I'm going to select a few more lines, which is going to be that line, that line, and that one right there. So you can see the difference that that has made right there. So go ahead and click OK, and now we've completed the part.